This is the second video lecture for section 3.7 on modular arithmetic and ciphers. In this lecture, I'll be talking about the Visionaire and auto key ciphers. In the previous lecture, we talked about replacing days of the week or months of the year by numbers, but this time we're going to replace the alphabet. So we're going to place the letter A by the number 0, B by 1, C by 2, and so on, all the way up to replacing Z by 25. And now we can do modular arithmetic with letters. So for example, we could compute something like R plus G. So if we list out our alphabet, and I'll be doing this several times throughout here just to help us keep track of what's going on. So I'm going to write out the alphabet, the full alphabet now, if you remember when we did the uh, bifid cipher, we left out the letter J. We're not going to do that this time. We're using the full alphabet. So the numbers I'm starting with, I'm starting with A being 0, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, F is going to be 5, all the way up to K being 10, P being 15, U being 20, and Z being 25. So we can fill in these numbers here. I kind of like to group it by fives just because counting by fives isn't too bad. 21, 22, 23, 24. All right, so we do that. And then we know that R is 17. We know that G is 6. So we do R plus G, so we're doing 17 plus 6. That gives us 23. And then once we have our 23, we look up 23 in our alphabet, and we see that that's X. So the sort of letter version of that is instead of 17 plus 6 equals 23, we're going to say R plus G equals X. Now, if you're wondering why in the heck we would, de would we do that, numbers are way easier to think about, we're actually going to see an example of why we're going to use this for an encryption process in just a minute. So let's do a couple of examples using this letter arithmetic. So T plus Y and C minus W. My first step is going to be, again, to write out the alphabet and number the letters. So there's the alphabet. And again, notice that I've written the letters in rows of five. And the reason I'm doing that is so that it's easier to number them. I don't really need to number all of the letters. I just need to number the ones that are involved in these problems. So A starts at zero. And then five letters later is F, which is going to be five. Five letters later is K, so that's going to be 10. Five letters later in the alphabet is P. U is 20, and Z is 25. Now, the problems, the first problem here is asking me to compute T plus Y. So T is over here in this row. So now I'm going to count across 16, 17, 18. So T is 19. And then Y is down here. So in this row, 21, 22, 23, 24. So Y is 24. So I'm computing 19 plus 24. And if I grab my calculator, 19 plus 24 is going to be 43. Now, 43 is bigger than 25. 43 does not directly represent any letter of the alphabet. So what I'm going to do is use modular arithmetic. That means I'm going to find the remainder when 43 is divided by 26. Now, there's 26 letters. 26 is the modulus. We talked about that word in the previous lecture. So 43 divided by 26, that gives me 1.65. So I take the whole number part, multiply that by 26. 26 times 1 is 26. And then 43 minus 26, again, calculator can help me there, is going to be 17. So 43 is the same as 17 in this weird modular arithmetic that we've been studying. And 17 represents the letter R. So T plus Y equals R. That would be the solution to my letter arithmetic problem. All right, let's do this next one, C minus W. So C is up here in the top row of my chart, so that's letter number 2. W is way down here, which is letter number 22. And 2 minus 22, again on my calculator, I can figure out as negative 20. Now remember that remainders, this sort of dividing on my calculator and finding the remainder, doesn't quite work as well for negative numbers. But just like up here, what we ended up doing was just subtracting 26, because the number 43 was just too big. So the way that we figured out the remainder is we just subtracted 26. So this number, negative 20, is too small, so we're going to make it bigger by adding 26. And when we add 26, we get positive 6, and that's going to be the equivalent number in our modular arithmetic. So I find letter number 6 in my alphabet. That's going to be right here, letter G. So the solution to this problem is that C minus W equals G. Okay, so now what can we do with this weird letter arithmetic that we've invented? Well, remember the Caesar cipher. The Caesar cipher encrypts a message by moving each letter three spaces forward in the alphabet. But moving three spaces forward is really going to be the same as adding three 
in this letter arithmetic. And since 3 represents the letter D, what we're really doing is taking all the letters in our original message and adding the letter D to each of those letters. So it's going to look something like this. So if we wanted to encrypt the message attack at daybreak using the Caesar cipher, what we're doing is we're taking all of the letters of our original message, that's here. This is what we're adding. In this case, we're adding D to every single letter. And then this down here is our encrypted message. That's the message that we would actually send to the commander on the field, and then they would have to decrypt the message using the reverse process. So the way that we're computing these letters is using the same letter arithmetic that we were talking about earlier. So for example, to encrypt the letter T, what we're doing is we're replacing T by the number 19, we're adding that to the number 3, and then we get the number 22, which we then replace by the letter W. Sometimes if we go over, we wrap around. So for example, to encrypt the letter Y, 24 plus 3 is actually 27, but in modular arithmetic, we're going to take 27, subtract 26, and that's going to give us 1. So Y gets encrypted as B. And now if we want to decrypt the Caesar cipher, well, what's the opposite of adding D? The opposite would be to subtract D. So again, we're going to replace the letters with those corresponding numbers, perform the arithmetic calculation, and then use modular arithmetic by either adding or subtracting 26 if the result that we get is too big or too small. So again, the process is going to look like this. So for example, to decrypt the letter N, we replace N by 13. Again, that's just me writing out the alphabet and numbering the, the letters like I've done a couple times now. We take 13 minus 3, that gives us 10. And then again, we look at our alphabet chart to see which number or which letter corresponds to the number 10, and that turns out to be K. And again, we may have to wrap around. So when I decrypt the letter B, I'm doing the arithmetic 1 minus 3, that gives me negative 2, but negative 2 is too low, so I fix it by adding 26, that gives me 24, and 24 corresponds to the letter Y. Now, as we've seen before, the Caesar cipher is not a great cipher because it's a substitution cipher, and that means it's vulnerable to frequency analysis. So we can expand on the idea by making a better cipher by instead of just adding the same letter every time, we add a repeating keyword. So for example, I can encrypt the message it was Earth all along with the keyword apes using this cipher. So what do I do? So first I write the original message. So that was going to be I-T-W-A-S-E-A-R-T-H-A-L-L-A-L-O-N-G. That's my original message. And then what I write under that is the keyword, and I repeat that. So the keyword here is the word apes. So A-P-E-S, A-P-E-S, just over and over and over again. And if you get to the end and you're in the middle of your keyword, that's okay. You just stop. So I get AP, I'm out of, my message ran out, so I just stop there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add. So I'm going to add these letters together. And again, this is the same letter arithmetic that we've been talking about. So to make that a little bit easier, I'm going to write my alphabet out up here. So there's my alphabet. Remember, this means A starts at 0, F5, K10, P15, U20, and Z25. So for my first letter, I've got I, which is counting out, that's going to be 8. A is 0. 8 plus 0 is 8. And so that's going to be the letter I again. T is here in my fourth row. So 16, 17, 18, 19. So that's going to be 19. P is 15. So 19 plus 15 is 34. But then when I do my modular arithmetic, that number is too big. I subtract 26, that's going to give me 8. And 8 is once again the letter I. Let me do a couple more. W is 22. That's here in my last row. E is the number 4. So that's going to be 22 plus 4, which is 26. 26 is too big, so I subtract 26. That gives me a 0. And 0 is the letter A. A is 0. S is 18. 0 plus 18 is 18, and 18 is the letter S, and so on. And I continue on for each letter in the message. So this is what that ends up looking like. So I, I, A, S, that's what we had gotten so far, and here's just the rest of it. 
So this is a more secure cipher, right? So this is no longer a substitution cipher. For example, the first two letters of our message were different, the original message, they were different, but in the encrypted message, they both ended up being I. So that frequency analysis that we were talking about isn't necessarily gonna work for this fusion error cipher. Now to decrypt the message, we just subtract. So again, what are you seeing here? So this right here is our encrypted message, right? So that's the sort of seemingly nonsense message that we receive. The second row here is again our repeated keyword. And then instead of adding, we're subtracting. And again, if we ever get a negative, we're gonna add 26 to figure out what that letter actually was. Now, even though this is more secure than the Caesar cipher, it's still not very secure, right? The keyword was four letters long. So that means that every fourth letter is using the same substitution rule. Our keyword was the letter, uh, was the word apes. So that means that the first letter is being encrypted by adding A, but so is the fifth letter, and so is the ninth letter, and the thirteenth letter, and so on. The second letter is getting encrypted by adding P, but so is the sixth letter, and the tenth letter, and the fourteenth letter, right? Every four letters is going to use the same substitution rule. Now that's four different substitution rules, but again, for a long enough message, or if you use this encryption method, this cipher, enough times with the same keyword, eventually there's going to be enough information out there for a frequency analysis, a modified frequency analysis, to be able to work. So a way to get around that problem by not using the same keyword over and over and over again is to do something called the auto key cipher. So instead of repeating the keyword over and over, we're only going to write it down once. And after that, we're going to write the original message underneath our original message, but shift it over by the keyword. And this is going to help address that sort of repeated substitution cipher weakness that the Visionaire cipher has. So it's going to look a little something like this. So let's say we're going to enc uh, encrypt the message Bruce Willis is dead with the keyword sixth. Sorry if that's a spoiler for you. So Bruce Willis, L-I-S-I-S-D-E-A-D. -E so again, this is my original message. I write that in my top row. And then underneath that, I'm going to write my keyword. So my keyword is the word sixth, S-I-X-T-H. But if this was the Visionaire cipher, I would just write sixth, sixth, sixth over and over and over again. But I'm not going to do that this time. Instead, what I'm going to do is start writing my original message again, shift it over. So I'm going to start writing B-R-U-C-E. Now, because it's shifted over, I'm going to run out of space. But whenever I get to the end, whenever I've got a, a match to the end of my original message, I just stop. So I was halfway in the middle of the word is, but I just ran out of space, so I'm done. So this is the keyword followed by as much of the original message as you can fit in that line. And it's not going to be all of it because you're shifting it over. And now I'm going to add, just like we did with the Visionaire cipher, but now we're not adding the same thing over and over and over again. Okay, so again, I'm going to write out my alphabet and do the first few letters for you here. Okay, here we go. So I've got B plus S. So B is letter number one. S is going to be letter number 18. So one plus 18 is going to be 19. And 19 is the letter T. So my first encrypted letter is T. Next up, I've got R. R is 17. I is going to be 6, 7, 8. 17 plus 8 is 25. And that means that's the letter Z. Next up, I've got U. U is 20. X, 21, 22, 23. X is 23. 20 plus 23 is 43. And that's too big. So I subtract 26 from that. 43 minus 26 is going to be 17. And 17 is the letter R. So the third letter of my encrypted message is R. And I just keep going in that way. So all the way across the message doing that letter arithmetic. So again, TZR, that's what we've gotten so far, and this is just the rest of it. So that's what that process looks like, the encryption process. What about the decryption process? That's a little trickier here because now we don't exactly know what to subtract. Again, remember that if we are receiving the encrypted message, we know the keyword, right? That's the secret password that the person sending the message and me receiving the message, we know that. That's our sort of secret password but I don't know the original message. So I don't exactly know what to subtract from my encrypted message that I receive, but I can do this in chunks. 
So if I want to start decrypting this message, I know that the first thing that I should subtract is my keyword. So this right here is the keyword. I know that. But what's supposed to go in this spot here is my original message. And I don't know that until I decrypt it. But as I've subtracted my keyword, now what I know are the first five letters of my original message. So I can write those here because I know that what's supposed to go in this second row is the original message. I still don't know what goes in this sort of empty space over here, but now I can find out the next five letters of my original message. So I can do X minus B, that's gonna turn out to be W. Z minus R turns out to be I. F minus U turns out to be L. N minus C turns out to be L. And M minus E turns out to be I. And now once I know that, now I know the next five letters of my original message, so I can write those here. And then I can subtract and then take the rest of the original message and fill out that second row. So in this way, we can decrypt the auto key cipher. Okay, to wrap things up, we've seen how modular arithmetic gives us a way to make new ciphers that are more secure than the simple substitution ciphers that we studied in the previous section. But so far, we've been focusing on addition and subtraction, addition to encrypt our messages and subtraction to decrypt our messages. Next time, we're going to talk about how multiplication can be involved, and we'll see how that gives us more encryption options.